Yo, what up? It's your boy T-Rex, a.k.a. Mr. One Love T.O. I made a t-shirt for the people because uh, I believe in our people. I believe that we are the world in one city. I believe we are the best city in the world. Why? Because we represent every inch of the world right here in this little metropolitan. So, uh, shout out to the six, man. I appreciate you. Keep doing what you do. We're going to keep supporting you. One love. Six, six, six. Shout out to the six, Toronto, we're on the call. Hey, what's up guys? You're in Toronto with your girl Nadia Stone. Follow the underscore six. Check out their website, the hyphen six.com. It's a thrill life, it's a thrill life, make a sacrifice, a sacrifice, yeah. Hey guys, it's your girl, She's So Cold, and today we're shooting for the six, and with me I have White Yachty in the building. Yes. Welcome to Toronto. So today we're going to be interviewing him, and our first question is... Your jokes are received in Toronto compared to other cities. Look at them as, as more supporters, more than anything. Um, but yeah, Toronto has always shown me a lot of love from, from when I first started to do videos. They have always shown me love and just feel like, to be honest, feel like I'm a second home. You know what I mean? Like, I'm a come to random, just feel like they're in my yard, you know, I enjoy it. I mean, I have quite a large support base out here, like somewhere in the region, I'll be easy, probably like 20k plus. Wow, you know what I mean? Yeah, so especially in one city, so yeah. it's amazing, man. That's yeah. great, that's great, okay. Um, our next question is How does being white affect your stand up comedy? And in today's social climate, do you feel your race helps or hurts when you're trying to get your jokes across? Um, um, we, I, mean, I think it affects my, my stand up comedy because I make fun out of the, the situation. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I make, I make fun out of the fact that I'm white and I speak like this. You get me? So, so to me, there's not, it doesn't affect it in a bad way. Um, in terms of social, uh, with, with, with me doing jokes and being like and across the world with people seeing my videos and that you always have people that doubt you, you always have people that talk about oh, look it's another white man trying to be black yeah. first thing first I don't know how you try to be black you get me like, like I'm not getting up and saying I'm a black man my name is White Yard <laughs> the white is yeah. there you know what I mean so how, when people say that I mean people you always say oh why are you trying to talk black how do you talk black? Like somebody talk white for me, somebody talk black for me, somebody talk pink for me, green for me, yellow. I never know you can talk with a color. It's an accent. You get me? Simple mm -hmm. as that. So to me, to them people, it's just ignorance. You know, them then don't take the time out to educate themselves. Yes. And that's all it is. Yes. Okay. Um, Toronto is very well known for our YouTubers and vloggers and comedic skits. Mm -hmm. um, you've mastered the IG short clips. Obviously, they're hilarious. Um, but have you ever considered doing YouTube skits or vlogging pieces of your very interesting life? Yeah, I've done a few before. They're, they're on my, um, my my YouTube channel as well. It's just what it is is being so busy doing so many things. Mm -hmm. It's hard to sit down and add more to it right now because I, I'm a guy that when I'm doing things, I don't like to. Like, I focus on one thing at a time. Because when I first got into this, I used to try to do 10 things. But when you're trying to do 10 different things, you cannot give the 10 things 100%. So none of them don't work because you're not giving it the full potential that it can have. So I try to focus on one thing at a time. But in terms of like YouTube, I got a few things coming up for my YouTube channel. Um, vlogging, I, I, I've done vlogging a few times and I'm going to get back into it more. But I don't want to vlog. I see people vlog and they're just vlogging, just nothing. It's like, <laughs> why? Like, you know what I mean? Like, that is, you just wake up in the morning because you're in your house all day, just vlogging, walking around the house, opening your kitchen, 
I'm gonna cook up like no man like I vlog if something's happening mm -hmm. or, or, or a situation not just get up and vlog for the sake of putting on a video so that's why I ain't really doing that much okay fair enough um who are some local Toronto talents that you have your eye on or people that you should be on the lookout for? You know, yeah, like, um, Moon is, like, it's not even safe to look out for or I have my eye on them, I know them and I like, and they're probably not even, they big, man, they're not even just local, they're international, man. Shout out to my boy Tricks, you know, <laughs> like, Tricks the comedian, like, um, we actually have done shows in, in, in the UK together. Mm -hmm. He's come over there and we was on a tour together and he's like, yo, can't wait for you to come over. And I've been over here, done shows together, I'm bringing him over to do some shows over there. So big up to Tricks, big up to all the comedians here, man, trying, learning the graph, you know, because it's not easy, you know, and there's, there's I, I know there's, um, like yeah, Femi Larson as well. Yeah. He, he's he's like a YouTuber presenter type of guy as well. And I met him a few times as well. He's he's, he's doing well. Um, is it McFly? Um, Do, yeah, Marlin. Yeah, Marlin as well. So, we love Marlin. Yeah, so you know, I know there's a few um over here doing their thing already. But it's nothing said. Look out for them because they're already doing it. You know, so um yeah, I, need, I probably need to look out for. You. I I need to go look out for some talent. Maybe you can tell me some what I need to look out for <laughs> upcoming ones, isn't it? Like, yeah. let me know. Me check them out and I see what going. Yeah. Um, what you means? See the attitude yeah. change. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Well, I don't know what it is. My questions My now. Get rid of the phone. <laughs> <laughs> let me throw it. Put the phone. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty much up. <laughs> okay. So, what got you interested in doing comedy? Were you like? kind of like a class clown in school were you introverted extroverted like what made you say okay i'm gonna put myself out there first and first man i put myself out there <laughs> so, like i'm out there but i'm not putting myself yeah no um i was never a class clown and i was i'm still not a class clown let's just clarify that um comedy kind of just happened to me and, and i didn't do it to be funny like when i started doing videos i started on keek you know what I mean? When key, yeah, and like, I, I, but my key blew up. I, I got verified everything, like, but key, key died, and that was it. It was like end of that. Mm -hmm. I just did videos talking about real life situations, but apparently when I rant about things, people find it funny. Like, 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 but me attack reality. Me attack facts. Like me attack about people who smoke cigarettes. And me I say, yo. If you have smoke cigarette, you have to learn when you go into the shop and buy your cigarettes to buy chewing gum. It goes together, it don't make sense, you know, like you cannot drink coffee and cigarette and don't have chewing gum and mouthwash in your pocket. Like and they wanna to talk to me. But people you see people find that funny, I'm like, but me I talk reality. So just things like that. And then what happened is that from my videos, people is like, yo, you're funny, like you need for the stand up and you know, just from there, like the encouragement of, of the people that support me and said, listen, the people that follow me said, do it, do it, and then start doing the comedy scene. I started doing the stage near enough the same time as I was doing the videos. Mm -hmm. So the boat were growing together, and it was just a life changing thing for me because it's like, I'm not young, you get me, like, I'm in my 30s now, you know? So yeah. it came late, comedy came late to me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, when you first started doing stand up and doing comedy and stuff, did you have stage fright? And if you did, how did you manage to get over that? More nerves than stage fright. It was more nerves that would kick in. But what I always said to myself, my aim every time when I go on stage, even to today, is to make the audience laugh within the first 30 seconds. Once you do that, that's it. The nerves will start to go. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm always any show, don't care like how many times I've done the set before, no matter if I've performed in front of the people and before. I'm always nervous before I go on stage and I feel like I'm happy with that. Because I feel like the day when I'm not nervous before I go on stage, something wrong. You know, you, you get too complacent. I got too comfortable now. You know, like no, yeah. When you're nervous it means that you actually care about what the outcome's gonna be. When you don't have no nerves, just go out there and you don't care. And you probably just go out there and mess up on the people be like, yo, that brother ain't no good man. I will bring him coming. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Um, 
Yeah, man. I do have a little bit, man. That's stage fright, just nerves. Just nerves. Yeah. Oh. So, no. that was <laughs> She So Cold and White Yardy on the six. White Yardy in the six, on the six with six questions. You don't know a thing already. Big up from me. <laughs> Big up, we just make a big speech. <laughs> All right, guys, so that wraps up our interview with White Yachty. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're done. We're done. We're done. <laughs> like Oprah signing out. <laughs>